This episode, we're going to talk about local anesthetics, the toxic dose, how to calculate them. And we're going to do this in the most simplified way so that you will be able to answer any local anesthetic toxic dose calculation questions with doing very little math and without even thinking about it. Local anesthesia is broken down into amides or esters. Amides are by far the most common type of local anesthesia that you will be using in foot and ankle surgery. Amides are broken down in the liver, whereas esters are broken down in plasma by pseudocolonesterase. You must memorize that amides are broken down in the liver. It has a theoretical clinical application. For example, patients with hepatotoxicity, or other conditions of the liver. The most common used amides are lidocaine and bupivacaine. They are oftentimes mixed together in a one-to-one -one solution, lidocaine being short-acting and bupivacaine being long-acting. In order to answer a toxic dose calculation question, you must memorize that lidocaine has a per kilogram toxic dose of five milligrams per kilogram plain, seven milligrams per kilogram with epinephrine. Lidocaine plain has a toxic dose max of 300 milligrams, whereas lidocaine with epinephrine has a toxic dose of 500 milligrams. Know that marking plain has a max dose of two milligrams per kilogram, and its max dose is 175 milligrams plain or 225 milligrams with epinephrine. Historically speaking, cocaine was one of the first local anesthetics discovered in 1884. Since then, we have not really used many esters. Focus on this graph at the amides. And the important thing to do is to be able to look at this and be able to tell from the name, is it an ester or is it an amide? and you can easily do so by the double I in all of amides. You can quickly know if it's an amide or an ester by looking at the number of I's. Amides have two, ester is one. You will be using two amides on a regular basis, almost daily, and that's lidocaine and bupivacaine, so it's worth spending the time to memorize. The Others, not so much. You may see people use ropivacaine because it has such a long lasting effect. However, this is not a common use. Esters are almost never used. The primary mechanism of action of local anesthetics is on nerve cell membranes, where agents diffuse through the membrane, causing a blockade of nerve sodium channels. The nerve cell is unable to depolarize and axonic conduction is inhibited. Remember that pKa is the pH at which 50% is base and 50% is ionized. The body is alkaline at 7.4, and remember that the closer the amide pKa is to the pH of the body, the faster the onset of action. This has clinical relevance when we understand that infection causes the pH to drop or become more acidic. This means there's going to be less diffusion of the local anesthetic into the neuron and a slower onset and decrease in effectiveness. So the clinical relevance is if you have an infected toe or other body part, you're going to be needing more anesthetic than you would typically. Local anesthetic first affects C fibers, A delta fibers, and sympathetic fibers. First, the patient feels a loss of pain followed by a light touch and then temperature. Remember, motor function and pressure sensation is preserved, so the patient will feel pressure, just not pain. Lidocaine is the most commonly used local anesthetic. 
It is used in a dose of 1% per 10 milligrams per milliliter or 2%. It takes action in two to four minutes and has a duration of up to two hours. Bupivacaine is also commonly used because it has an onset of five to eight minutes, but a duration of four to six hours. It is most commonly used in 0.5% or sometimes 0.25%. So when we do a preoperative injection, if we were, for example, to inject 20 milliliters of 1% lidocaine plane in an ankle block, we have to ask ourselves, what is the dose used? Well, 1% lidocaine plane is equal to 10 milligrams. If we inject 20 milliliters, that's equal to 20 milliliters times 10 milligrams equals 200 milligrams per milliliter. And we know the toxic dose of lidocaine, 1%, is... So that leaves us with 10 more milliliters of 1% lidocaine to inject. Now, what if we were to inject 20 milliliters of a one-to-one -one mixture of 2% lidocaine plane and 0.5% marcaine plane. We know that we're injecting 2% this time, so 2% times 10 would be 20 milligrams, and we're doing 10 milliliters, so that equals 200 milligrams per milliliter of lidocaine plane. When it comes to the marcaine plane, 0.5% times it by 10 equals 5 milligrams five milligrams and we're doing 10 milliliters of that. So that's gonna be 50 milligrams per milliliter of marking plane. Remember that our toxic dose of lidocaine plane is what? 300 milligrams. And our toxic dose of marking plane is what? 175 milligrams. So when it comes to 2% lidocaine plane, that gives us five milliliters left. When it comes to 0.5% marcaine plane, we know that we can do 125 milliliters left of marcaine plane. We've talked about epinephrine already and how we can use lidocaine and marcaine. We can use more of that when we use it in conjuncture with epinephrine. And this is because the hemostasis that is caused through vasoconstriction. Epinephrine minimizes the bleeding in the surgical field, which is an advantage, and it may make tourniquets unnecessary in people that may not be able to tolerate a tourniquet. It is injected into ankles for ankle arthroscopy because it clears the field because of more vasoconstriction, less bleeding in the ankle joint when you're trying to do an ankle scope. It also benefits you because you can use less local anesthetic because it stays in the field longer. Allergic reactions are very uncommon for local anesthetic. However, hydrolysis of ester-based local anesthetics can lead to the formation of PABA as a metabolite, and this can cause allergic hypersensitivity reaction. Toxicity of local anesthetic first has its effect on the CNS and then moves its way into the cardiovascular systems. We first see symptoms like disorientation, metallic taste, tingling in the mouth, tinnitus or muscle spasms, seizures, coma, and then following that we see respiratory arrest, cardiac arrest, and ultimately potential for death, although this is very uncommon. Which of the following is preserved with local lidocaine injection? Pain, pressure, temperature, motor, or BND? Remember that both pressure and motor function are preserved with local anesthetic injections. So we'll never have a complete motor loss and the patient will still be able to feel you touching or feel the pressure, but not pain. Which of the following is metabolized in the liver? Procaine, bupivacaine, chloroprocaine, or tetracaine? First, you have to know what local anesthetic is metabolized in the liver. And we know it's not esters, we know it's amides that are metabolized in the liver. And esters are metabolized 
by plasma pseudocolonesterase. After we know it's an amide, we have to be able to tell the difference between all of these, which one is an amide? And the answer is bupivacaine, because in its name, you can easily tell it has two eyes as opposed to the esters with one. Procaine is metabolized where? The answer, procaine, is an ester. It's not metabolized in the liver or the kidneys, it is metabolized in the plasma pseudocolonesterase. A postoperative ankle block is about to be given. Preoperatively, 20 cc's of a one-to-one -one mixture of 1% lidocaine plane with 0.5% marcaine plane was given. How much more can you add for the postoperative block? To answer this, we have memorized that lidocaine plane can be given at 300 milligrams. And we know that marcaine plane can be given at 175 milligrams. So we ask ourselves, we have already given the patient 10 cc's of 1% lidocaine plane. So 1% times 10 equals 10 times 10 equals 100. So we have an additional 200 to give to the patient of lidocaine or 20 cc's of 10. When it comes to marcaine, we know we've given 10 cc's. We multiply that by five and that gives us 50 cc's of marcaine plane. So we know that we have 125 milligrams left to give or 12.5 cc's of 0.5% marcaine plane? Answer is D. What is the maximum safe volume of lidocaine which can be given to a 120 kilogram patient? Now this is a different question, but there is a very simple way to solve this. Have memorized that lidocaine plane is 5 milligrams per kilogram and that's plain. When it comes to epinephrine it's 7 milligrams per kilogram. Have memorized lidocaine plane 5 milligrams. The next step we're going to take the 120 kilograms move the decimal one space to the left so if it's 120 kilograms it'll be 12. We then divide that by the percentage of lidocaine. So either 1% or 2%. In this case, it's 1% lidocaine plain. So we multiply five by 12 and then by one and we get 60. And this will help us quickly and simply estimate and calculate for any possible question, the percentage of lidocaine plain uh, to be given to the patient. That is 120 kilograms. Let's try that question again. What is the maximum safe volume of lidocaine to be given to, in this time, a 100 kilogram patient? Last time it was 120. So we have memorized that lidocaine plane can be given in a dose of 5 milligrams per kilogram. So we multiply the 5 times not 100 kilograms, but 10. We then divide it by the percentage of lidocaine. So that gives us about 50, or we'll have to understand it's going to be a little less than that, 46 milliliters of 1% lidocaine plane. And we know that can be just halved to give us the 2% lidocaine plane, which gives us 23 milliliters of 2% lidocaine plane. Next question, what is the maximum safe volume of lidocaine to be given with epinephrine to an 80 kilogram patient? In this case, we follow the same procedure Instead of five, however, we recall that lidocaine plane with epinephrine allows us to give seven milligrams per kilogram. So we multiply the seven times eight and divide by one and we get 
56 milliliters of 1% lidocaine with epinephrine. Or if we think about it, if it's 2% lidocaine plain or with epinephrine, that allows us to give 28 milliliters. What is the maximum safe volume of marcaine plain to be given to a 90 kilogram patient? To answer this, we remember that marcaine plain is given at two milligrams per kilogram. So we take the two, we multiply that by the weight of the patient, which is 90 kilograms. So we're gonna multiply that by nine, and then we are going to divide by 0.5%, which is the same as multiplying by two. This gives us 36 milliliters or we can think we can do twice that of 0.25% marking plane, so 72 milliliters of that. So in summary, to do the most simple math as quickly as possible and as simply and accurate as possible, you can summarize it like this. Lidocaine plane is five milligrams per milliliter. So we multiply that by the kilograms divided by 10 and then that sum we divide by the percentage, usually 1% lidocaine or 2% lidocaine. That all changes if we use lidocaine plain or lidocaine with epinephrine. The same exact process for marcaine. We quickly know and re recall that marcaine plain is given at a maximum dose of two milligrams per kilogram. And we know that we can multiply that by the kilograms divided by 10, and then divide that sum by 0.5, or we can think of that as multiplying by two to get to the max safe dose calculation. What effect does infection have on pH? Infection causes decrease in pH and requires more local. This is the correct answer, and we know this because infection causes the body to become more acidic, and therefore we need more local anesthetic. So we remember clinically we should inject proximal to the site of infection so that we can use overall less anesthetic. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was a quick and easy way to answer any question on local anesthetic calculations.